the great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada, user power of engineering, help you. Yes, you find the things that you're looking for, part substitutions, just about anything you could possibly imagine, make, or need on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the great search of the week this week? Okay. Um, somebody was asking me about this connector on the ESP32 S3 Metro. Let's go there and I'll show it off. Um, oh, sorry, the uh, overhead. I mean, apologies. Yeah. Um, so on this board, uh, you know, you got your classic Arduino headers and um, the SPI connector. And then there's this. And they're like, what is this connector? What do you, why do you have this here? This is a, I call this an SWD connector, but technically that's not correct. It's a JTAG slash SWD connector. But 98% of the time, it's for SWD, a single wire debug. Um, this is a two by five, 10 pin shrouded IDC cable that is used on almost every ARM core chip, but also you can use it on like Tensilka with, um, for JTAG debugging. And this is used for trace debugging and like uh, breakpoint debugging. When, you're, when you need something more, better in like memory um, uh, analysis, like you wanna look, look into the memory in the middle of debugging, um, you know, printf debugging is, is pretty common or oscilloscope debugging, I do it all the time. But there's a lot of times where you need something a little bit more powerful. Um, also on some chips, it's used for the programming part. Um, some chips, they don't, you can't, you don't have a built-in USB bootloader like the, this one does where you can connect the USB or through UART and uh, bootload immediately There's a ROM loader. For a lot of chips, they come like blank, blank, blank. You need to load uh, code in. And so for example, um, you know, here I've got a, uh, a, a program where this is an Atmel ICE, and um, you'll notice, oh, it's so tough to see, but there you go, SAM and AVR. It uses those connectors as well to this cable, and then you can connect. Here, I don't have enough space for a full SWD connector, so I just have some wires, um, and I have a breakout instead. And uh, what I like about this breakout is it also shows you the pins. So this is the SWD pinout, uh, which is, you know, power, a bunch of grounds, um, SDIO, SD clock, uh, SDO, which is the actual debugging if you're not just programming, but you want to send data back and forth, um, output, uh, the reset, and then I don't know if I have, I don't have the JTAG uh, pinout here, but maybe let's go to the computer and I'll show. Um, we do have this SWD. I, you know, we stock and uh, this adapter is also available on DigiKey, uh, which also has um, the JTAG pinout. So SWD is a Cortex M0 specific debugging interface. JTAG is the universal one. So the pinout is also used for um, JTAG, where you have, uh, you know, um, MS clock data out, data in for JTAG, and it replaces this original huge connector this 20 pin connector which you know ha would have a lot more possible data transfer but um most people cannot fit these gigantic connectors on their pcbs it's bigger than the rest of it uh these are much more compact um and let me also so let me show so i had the um avr uh swd so let me um show off two more options okay so can you go to the overhead again i'll just show this quickly um, another option is, uh, you know, I showed off this ST debugger. What's interesting about, cause I'm, you know, be, later it'll be like, what's, what's a two side shroud, uh, connector. Um, there are some times where you want to have much more debug data going over. You want like trace data. And, uh, Scott actually did a stream, um, Friday and last Friday about having a, one of these longer connectors and they look similar, but they're, um, they're much longer. Hold on. This is your standard two by two by five connector. And then this is a two by eight, I think, two by eight connector. So it adds another four pins, which is used for uh, more debugging data. And for that reason, you might see, see how it has, it's, it's shrouded. So it's got like this two pieces of plastic here for the key and a piece of plastic here to help you orient, but it doesn't have the full shrouding see how this one has four let you know four um sides because this 
longer style connector would not fit in. So it's kind of like, this is like a backward compatibility mechanical connection, but you still want to have the key. There's a little key, a plastic key here. You can, you can see this plastic nubbin. And then also, of course, um, your, your wonderful standard J-Link, uh, JTAG and debugging uh, by Seger, a nice German company. And um, you can use, uh, in this case, you use a Seger. They have the old connector, use that adapter and you go to this cable. Okay, so now I've shown you uh, this cable and the shrouding because that's important um, when you choose which one you want um, if you need to have you know compatibility with this wider shroud. But we're gonna just look for this um, kind of standard two by five connector. And then um, let's go to the computer again, please. Uh, for our feather NRF, you know, we have, here yeah, we sometimes stick it on our feathers. It's like, oh, you want to debug it. Um, here you go. And then on the um, Metro RP2040, we also, we have it here. And on the um, Metro uh, SAMD series, sorry, SAMD21. Ditto. I like to, you know, in the metros, I like to put them on there because there's space. Whereas feathers, I don't always have space. Although I think the original feather RP2040 um, has a spot for it. So sometimes I don't can put it on, but it's like, because it's like so, it's not really used common. It's not used by beginners and makers. It's often used by more advanced people who are doing the software development. So I put a spot and you can solder it in. And I tend to use the SMT version. But I will say there's a lot of people who use the through hole version of this connector. Okay, so it's a very long intro, but now let's go to DigiKey and find this part. Okay, so we want, just go look under header because it's a header. Um, and you can see even the, the default image sort of looks a little bit like what we want. Now, ironically, if you go to this category that has 550,000 different components in it, uh, the first one is actually kind of what we're looking for, but that's just like a total coincidence. Um, and you can see that it has a little pick plate on it. That's the pa plastic piece for the pick in place to be able to pick it up because obviously it's got mostly pins. Um, so these are very, very, very popular uh, headers, but let's pretend that it isn't like the first thing on the list, right? It's just a coincidence. So let's look for active components only. And we want it to have... Uh, the most important thing to watch out for is the pitch. You want it to be 1.27 millimeters or 0.05 inch pitch. So it's half half pitch, half of what you're used to, much uh, smaller. And uh, let's uh, apply. There's a lot. There's a significant number of boards that have that pitch. Um, okay, so we want to have two rows. So it's a two by five. And uh, number of positions, 10. And that's confusing because there's like 10 plus 8 flower. Just ignore those. We just want, just want 10. And then um, we also want to do the number of positions loaded. And this is confusing also. Originally, I clicked 10, but that was incorrect. What you want to click is all or dash, which is like, un, you know, Unknown. Okay, so we did the pitch, and then you need the row spacing. Sometimes the pitch, like between row pins, is not the same as the row spacing. It can it can vary. We want it to be the same. So I'm going to pick uh, row row spacing of 1.27. And then in this particular case, I'm going to say surface mount. But again, you can well, I'll I'll do that actually next. Um, the next thing that I do like to select is I want to have gold contacts. I feel like these days it's like gold contacts are just so much less likely to oxidize. Um, you know, tin, tin plate, especially lead free tin plate, you know, it can get a little uh, dusty after a bit. Um, the gold is literally one atom thick, so it's not like it's going to add a significant amount of expense, but I feel like the quality is much better. And then let's go with uh, in stock. Okay. So now we can look at some of the options because you see that there's the, the different shrouding. I thought that was kind of the most interesting thing to note. So first off, there's through hole versions. I find these annoying to solder. I find the pins are very close. I almost think like the surface mount's easier, but uh, you can get through hole versions of these. 
Um, you can get right angle. So, you know, sticks out the end. This is like the minimal style. It doesn't have any shrouding at all. However, I find, yeah, these are not cheaper because they're not very common. Let's see if we can find the uh, two shroud. Yeah, here you go. So that's sort of what we saw on that um, ST debugger where you can put in a two by five, but then you can have more pins coming out the sides. Um, you know, more expensive. This is going to be, you know, about $2 a piece, not like 60 cents. So let's go with um, surface mount. Let's see, where was that? Shred, ah, here. Surface mount only. And let's say it's shrouded, but you know, I don't care if it's two wall or, or four wall, but I don't want the unshrouded. I like to have the little thing so you don't plug it in, you know, backwards. I think that's, that's wise. If you're gonna pick a keyed connector, stick with the keying. Um, all right. So next up, uh, let's look by price. Let's look by price. And a couple good options here. So um, this comes in tray. So this is for hand placement um, from CNC Tech. But they also have a version that comes on tape and reel. And to be honest, it's not that much more expensive. Um, you know, the individual tray ones. I mean, if you're if you happen to have a pick and place, I can pick it up. But I find it much easier to go with tape and reel. So um, this one is in stock and it's, you know, 60 cents a piece, a good deal. And then one thing to watch for is some have little nubbins, placement dots. Let's see if I can, I'll show you. I think the, uh, feather RP 2040, I'll show you. Um, you see here it has the mounting posts you can select to get ones with mounting posts honestly i've never had an issue where these snap it's to protect you from snapping it off by accident as long as you push down and pull up when you're inserting and don't try to wedge it back and forth you shouldn't have an issue um i don't know if they have yeah they do have board guide here i think it's what's called board guides maybe and shrouds keying shroud mating flange let's see if that gets us ones that have uh nubbins let's see this one no this oh it does have a board guide you can kind of see i think with posts kind of hard to see but here is the post so you can get ones with posts if you so if you so desire um oops, these are slightly different keyed versions but the key is in the on the edge there so this is meant to not be compatible at all some other connector um but you don't really need the keys so i'm gonna go with this one this is my pick 3220 10 300 tr from cnc tech a lovely swd connector and that's a good church Wait.